dear students today we will be discussing about the thermal analysis of solar thermal power plant and we will be solving two problems to demonstrate how this analysis is carried out. Let us start with Starling engine. This Starling engine was developed and patented in 1816 by Robert Starling. As you can see the components primarily we have heat source, then we need piston, cylinder, displacer and a high conducting gas. Of course, we need a flywheel to rotate the device, so that this can be connected to the generator to produce electricity. That is how the Starling engine uses a fixed amount of gas in a closed cylinder. So, this is the gas and this is the closed cylinder. A piston is tightly fitted in a cylinder, this is the fitting which drives a flywheel through a crankshaft, we have crankshaft here. Okay. So, a gas displacer fitted in the cylinder is driven by the crankshaft with a phase shift in the motion of the piston. So, this is the displacer, so displacer will not produce any power, okay. it is helpful in providing the compression. To achieve effective operation the gas must have high thermal conductivity, so that is how hydrogen is chosen in this kind of engines. And this engine is not suitable for vehicle applications due to its large volume and it requires a special cooling mechanism. So, this engine also we can visualize something like if we provide some heat source, heat source here and if we say this is a confined boundaries and as I said if we consider a displacer, so it is something like this. Okay. And this is somewhat fixed okay. and we will have this kind of arrangement. Okay. So, it will move something like this, it goes and then we will have piston cylinder. goes something like this and we will have this piston and then this is the displacer. Maybe you can have this. and then we will have this flywheel here okay. and we need some cooling. Okay. So, it is something like, so gas expands when heated, so heat is supplied from the bottom. So, this gas which is hydrogen will expand and it contracts when cooled, when water is supplied from the side, it may be water cooled or may be uh, air cooled. This engine, this Stirling engine moves the gas from the hot side here to the cold side of the engine okay. and uh, this process is nothing but expansion and when cooling is done then what happens then it contracts. Okay. So, we will have heat, then we have expansion expansion, then we have cooling, then we will have contraction. So, this is the process by which this engine works. right? 
So, this displacer is here, the displacer never transmit power, right? It only moves the air back and forth from the hot side to the cold side, right? And you must remember it does not operate the crankshaft of the engine, right? So, here is the main thing happens it actually transmit the power and that is how energy is generated. So, let us now understand the cycle. So, it has two constant temperature and two constant isochoric process. So, if I am interested to write P V diagram, it shows something like this have this is constant volume ok. So, we can connect it here. So, we can name it as 1, we have 2, then 3, then we will have 4 ok. So, we can consider this is the hot side and this is the cold side. So, we can uh, normally the efficiency of this styling cycle is less than the Carnot cycle, but if the process is regenerative then this can be resembled like the efficiency of Carnot cycle. Okay? So, this 1 to 2 is nothing but isothermal that means constant temperature heat addition. And this is also sometimes known as expansion. Okay. Then we will have 2 to 3 is the isochoric, this is constant volume, heat removal, and we will have 3 to 4 is isothermal heat removal. And then we have 4 to 1 is the isochoric heat addition. Okay. So, these are different processes. Also, we can write down the expression heat transfer Q 1 to 2 is nothing but W 1 to 2 is something like R T 1 ln of V 2 by V 2 by v 1 and we have q 2 to 3 is something like minus constant volume process. So, that is why C v is here and w 2 to 3 is 0 and again you can write q 3 to 4 process will have w 3 to 4 this is heat transfer and work done is equal to minus r t 2 ln of v 3 by v 4 and q 4 to 1 is something like constant volume process is t 1 minus t 2 and of course, w 4 to 1 is 0 okay? because it is a PDB process. So, volume is constant. So, that is why work done is 0. And finally, if you are interested to know the sterling efficiency, sterling cycle efficiency, is nothing but Th minus Tc is Th, so it will be something like Tc by th. Okay. So, that is how we can do the analysis and find out the efficiency of Starling cycle. Right? So, it has primarily 4 processes, 2 isochoric process and 2 
isothermal process, right? So, under regenerative condition, that means area under the curve 2 to 3 and 1 to 4 should be same, okay? So, under that condition, we can have efficiency of Stirling engine is equivalent to the efficiency of Carnot cycle, right? Now, let us discuss the thermal analysis of Rankine cycle which is mostly used in solar thermal power plants. So, here we are replacing the boiler by solar concentrator. So, heat is generated and then steam is expanded in the turbine and work is developed and if we connect this with a generator then we can produce electricity and then exit of the turbine we need to condense and what we will have is the saturated liquid and that has to be pumped with the help of a pump and then it works in a closed cycle, right? So, the efficiency of this Rankine cycle can be increased by increasing the pressure in the boiler. So, how to increase the pressure this is also a important aspect. So, now let us draw T s diagram. So, this is temperature and this is entropy, this is only small and we will write on vapor dome. Okay. So, we will write here one and this is the pressure line. and go something like this okay and also come something like this so this is 3 4 4 this we'll have 1 to 2 and then two days, okay. So, what are different processes here? Here is the heat addition. Heat addition is two to three, okay. So, two to three is the heat addition. Then three to four is the expansion in the turbine, and we have ideal case as well as actual case. So, this maybe we can write is dotted line. And uh, this is the heat rejection, 4 to 1 is the heat rejection and 1 to 2 is the actual and 1 to 2 is the ideal and then 1 to 2 this is the actual pumping power. So, that is how we can find out what is the turbine efficiency as well as uh, no pump efficiency. So, if we are interested about uh, turbine efficiency, then how do you write turbine efficiency? So, this is eta t is something like enthalpy at 3 minus enthalpy at 4 days to the enthalpy at 3 and enthalpy at 4, right? And uh, pump efficiency will be so this is something like enthalpy at 2 minus enthalpy at 1 divided by enthalpy at 2 this enthalpy at 1. Okay. And heat input heat input u is nothing but H3 minus H2 this, okay. This is the actual case, and also this pump work can be expressed as the 
w 2 this I can write or w 2 this is h 2 this minus h 1 is equal to specific volume multiplied by p 2 minus p 1 this is the pressure difference and we will have pump efficiency. Okay. So, also we are interested about cycle efficiency. which is defined as eta is work done by heat supplied. So, work done is the network done it is H 3 minus H 4 days this is the actual enthalpy difference minus the energy required to pump water. So, this is again actual divided by heat supplied actual heat supplied. Okay. So, this is how we can find out the efficiency of the components and finally, we can find out the cycle efficiency. So, in order to find out the cycle efficiency, we need all the information like what is the enthalpy at H 3 and what is the enthalpy at 4 days and enthalpy is at 2 days and enthalpy is at 1. And of course, we need to know the heat supplied which is nothing but enthalpy difference between 0.3 and 0.2 days. Okay. So, these informations are required while solving or analyzing some of the solar thermal power plant. So, now let us move on to the Rankine cycle with reheating. So, how to augment the efficiency of the power plant. Okay. This Rankine cycle efficiency can be increased by increasing the pressure in the boiler. Okay. To avoid the increase of moisture in the steam turbine exit, steam is expanded to an intermediate pressure and reheated at constant pressure using two turbines in the reheat cycle. That means, first you see fluid is expanded in the high pressure turbine, then again what happens? It is heat is supplied and then again expanded in the second turbine. right? So, if we draw the T s diagram it looks something like this. So, we just do the vapor down and this is pacer line okay. and then this will be expanded to the same temperature and maybe we will let it. So, this is something like 2 this 3 then we will have 4, 4 this then again we have 5 then this will be 6, 6 this this may be 1 ok. This is 2 and this is T s diagram temperature and entropy diagram. Okay. So, this is what is said first 3 to 4 is the expansion in the turbine and then what happens again you have to heat it to attain the same temperature what is attained at 3 and then it is expanded again in the second turbine. right? So, that is how we can increase the efficiency of a Rankine cycle. right? So, if we are interested about the efficiency of this reheat cycle 
reheat is equal to work done this is net work done by heat supplied. So, here work done is first H 3 minus H 4 days these are all actual 3 to 4 is the ideal and 3 to 4 days is the actual plus H 5 minus H 6 days then minus H 2 days minus H 1 then heat supplied will be H 3 minus H 2 days this is actual heat transfer or heat supplied plus H 5 minus H 4 days. Okay. So, this is how we can increase the efficiency of Rankine cycle. Okay. Now, let us discuss about the Breton cycle. It is a gas turbine, it is a air standard cycle, and uh, mostly micro turbines are used for solar thermal power generation systems. And in case of micro turbines, its nominal electrical capacity is about 250 kilowatt or less. And these turbines combust gaseous fuel and operates on Breton cycle. And its efficiency is close to 30 percent at small scale. And high efficiency is achieved due to the presence of recuperators. So, you can see how these recuperators are installed here. We have compressor. So, air is compressed in the compressor and then it goes to the combustion chamber in case of our Breton cycle and then it is expanded in the turbine and then from turbine exit it again come back to the compressor and it works in a closed cycle. Here what you can see this combustor is replaced by this concentrator. Okay. So, very high heat is generated and then fluid is expanded in the turbine. So, this concentrator is act as a combustor and then the exit of the turbine which is at very high temperature this can be utilized to heat the compressed air by installing a recuperators. So, if we make this kind of management we can really get a good efficiency for this kind of arrangement. Right? So, as far as the Breton cycle is concerned it has two reversible isobars and two reversible adiabatic processes. So, these two 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat addition and process 4 to 1 is the constant pressure heat rejection and process 3 to 4 is the reversible adiabatic expansion and process 1 to 2 is the reversible adiabatic compression. Okay. So, PV diagram represents something like this 1 to 2 is the compression, 2 to 3 is the addition, heat addition, 3 to 4 is the expansion and then 4 to 1 is the heat rejection and it looks something like this if we are drawing T S diagram okay. 1 to 2 then 2 to 3, 3 to 4 then 4 to 1. And we can also express the Breton cycle efficiency of something like this 1 minus T 1 by T 2 and it is something like in terms of pressure ratio 1 minus 1 by R p to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma R p is the pressure ratio and gamma is the heat capacity ratio. Also we can have Breton cycle efficiency with regeneration it looks something like this. Okay. So, we can use this expression for calculation of Breton cycle efficiency 
with and without regeneration right so now let us study one problem so it goes something like for a collector having a parcel area so if you consider a collector okay here and we have observer solar radiation is coming and then receiving is striking on the concentrator and is going to the absorber this is concentrator this is absorber okay so this arrangement is made to generate heat okay this collector aperture area like this area that's a long area like right? which a big plant i am talking about not a single component so this area is given as 320 meter square and the concentration ratio is given as 32 and the absorber surface achieved a temperature of 450 degree C is the temperature and overall heat loss is 5.5 watt meter square degree Celsius. We need to find out what is the useful heat gain Q u need to be calculated in kilowatt and this useful heat gain will be utilized to produce steam at 9 bar, 9 bar gauge. So, that means 9 bar gauge plus 1 atm will give you something like 10 bar. Okay. So, it will be something like we will have one heat exchanger here and then this water will come and we will have pump here okay. and of course, we need condenser then we will have this turbine ok this is water cycle and work done will be there and finally, we can produce electricity by coupling an alternator right this turbine and this is pump a pumping work is WP ok and this is something like heat exchanger ok and here also fluid will be coming here okay and hot fluid will go here okay and this may be no fluid may be thermic fluid thermic fluid right so now water flow rate is given so water flow rate is given as 200 liter per hour controls the steam generation rate, the feed water enters the absorber tube at 25. So, T ambient, T ambient is 25 degrees C and uh, we need to find out the efficiency of the steam generation and also it is said that this pressure is 0.2 bar okay? and here is the 10 bar and we need to find out the pump work okay, WP need to be calculated and uh, rank and cycle efficiency. So, these are the parameters you need to find out right. So, let us now do the calculation ok. So, steam pressure already this is P steam pressure ok, steam pressure is something like 10 bar because 9 bar was given and 1 is the atmospheric pressure. So, 10 bar will be the steam pressure right. Now, let us solve this problem. So, we need to take help of steam table here. So, from the steam table and this has to be superheated. Okay. 
So, at p is equal to 10 bar and T 3 is 250 degree C, we can find out what is H 3. So, it is about 2943.1 kilojoule per kg, right. So, we can develop this T S diagram as well here, this is something like this and we can draw this line. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let us consider an ideal cycle 10 bar and here is 0 0.2 bar and of course, this is temperature and this is entropy. Okay? And from the saturated steam table, we will have at T w in is 25 degree C then H F W is equal to H F at 25 degree C is nothing but 104.83 kilojoule per kg. Okay? We can find out the steam generation efficiency. which is equal to mass flow rate multiplied by H s minus H f w divided by Q u. Okay? So, here it is something like 0 0.04167 because how we got this value m dot given to us is 150 liter per hour. So, if we convert to kg per second, it will be 150 to 10 to the power minus 3 cubic meter okay? and then multiplied by density is 1000 kg per cubic meter and this 1 hour is 3600 second. So, this is calculated to be 0 0.04167 kg per second. Okay? So, this m multiplied by entropy difference, this is H s is something like we have H 3. Okay? This is H 3. So, that is how we can write 2943.1 minus H w is this one 104.83 okay and what was q u we have to calculate this q u this may be 1 so we know the expression for useful heat gain useful heat gain this expression is something like q u is equal to observer area minus s minus u l by c t p m minus t a. Then if we substitute these values, so a a is given a 320 and S is 640 minus U L is given as 5.5 .5 and C is 32. Then we will have T P M is 450 and T A is 27. Okay? So, if you substitute this value, 
then this is come out to be 181.535 kilowatt. Okay. So, if we substitute this value of QU in expression 1, then we can calculate steam generation efficiency. So, 1 implies steam generation efficiency will be something like about 65.15 percent. Just we have substituted this value here in equation 1. So, this is found to be 65.15 percent. Okay. So, now again from saturated steam table at uh, point 1, we need to find out from saturated steam table at point 1 P 1 is 0 0.2 bar and specific volume is from the steam table 0 0.01017 cubic meter per kg. Okay. And also H 1 F is equal to 251.42 kilo joule per kg. Right. And also at point 2 P 1 is 10 bar right. So, 10 bar and entropy at here and here are same S 2 is equal to S 1. Okay. So, we can find out what is pump work. So, W pump is something like H 2 minus H 1 is equal to specific volume multiplied by P 2 minus P 1. Okay. So, this is calculated to be 10 minus 0 0.2 which is equal to and this will be kilo then it will be 10 square. Okay. So, it will be 0 0.9967 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, once we have this then we can calculate what is H 2. Oh, H 2 will be H 1 plus W pump which is equal to what is the value of H 1? Already we have calculated it is 251 not calculated we have found out from the steam table 42 plus 9967 which is equal to 252.417 kilo joule per kg. Okay. Now, since we need to find out the ideal Rankine cycle efficiency, then we need to do some more steps from the steam table again steam table of course, it is a superated steam table at point 3 P 3 is equal to 10 bar P 3 is 10 bar and T 3 is 250 degree 
Celsius and H 3 is 2943.1 kilo joule per kg and S 3 is 6.9265 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. And at point 4, P 4 is 0 0.2 bar and S 4 is equal to S 3 is equal to 6.9265. So, now we will find out the dry inspection. Okay. If we see here, what is the condition at this point that we are going to calculate now. So, from the saturated steam table, SF is 0 0.8320 kilo joule per kg Kelvin as F z is 7.0752 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and H F z is 2357.5 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, with this value we can find out what is dry inspection x. This is something like S 4 minus entropy at 4 minus entropy at this point divided by S f z land it. So, these values are known to us now we can substitute 6.9265 minus S f is 0 0.8320 divided by 7.0752 this value. So, this is calculated to be 0 0.8614 right. So, if we know this then we can find out what is H 4 enthalpy at 4 is something like H f plus dry inspection multiplied by H f z. So, this H f z value is also known to us and H f is already we have extracted 251.42 plus x is 0 0.8614 this is multiplied by we will have 2357.5. So, this is calculated to be 2282.17 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, once we are done with this, then we can calculate what is the cycle efficiency, and this is an ideal cycle right. So, this cycle efficiency can be defined as network done by heat supplied. So, this network done will be something like H 3 minus H 4 we will go back H 3 minus H 4 to the H 2 minus H 1 divided by heat supplied H 3 minus H 2. Okay. So, that is how we are doing here minus H 2 minus H 1 divided by H 3 minus H 2. So, if we substitute those values then its efficiency comes out to be 24.53 percentage. Okay. So, uh, here 
what I have shown how to calculate the efficiency. So, mostly we have used the steam table both saturated steam table as well as super steam table. So, we need to extract the data at different conditions and we need to find out the variables and finally, since we need the enthalpies at H 3, H 4, H 2, H 1 and H 3. So, these values are once known then we can immediately calculate the cycle efficiency. Right? We can also perform more numerical problems to strengthen our understanding and solving this kind of problems. Let us quickly solve one more problem. So, here again a cylindrical parabolic concentrator whose width is given as 4 meter and length is 20 meter has a receiver surrounded by an evacuated glass cylindrical envelope. So, it is something like this. Okay. The absorber tube has a diameter of 7.5 centimeter. So, this absorber tube diameter is 7.5 centimeter and is covered by an transparent envelope of diameter 10 centimeter. So, this diameter is 10 centimeter okay. and it is a glass and uh, glass thickness is oh, 3 mm. If you consider the glass maybe this glass thickness is 3 mm. Okay. The water acts as working fluid and enters at a temperature and flow rate of 259.2 degrees Celsius and 180 liter per hour through the absorber tube. The steam is expanded in the high pressure turbine to a pressure of 13 bar and reheated in the boiler at 390 degrees Celsius by following the reheat Rankine cycle. It then enters the low pressure turbine where it expands to a pressure of 0 0.16 bar. That means, turbine outlet pressure is 0 0.16 bar. We need to estimate the outlet steam temperature from the absorber and efficiency of the reheat Rankine cycle considering the data which is given here. Like date is 15 June at 1300 hours which is local apparent time and latitude is given as 26.916 degree, slope is 11.5, intensity of beam radiation is 810 watt per meter square, overall heat transfer coefficient is given as 6.5 watt meter square degree Celsius, ambient temperature 25 degree Celsius, specific heat of water is 4.182 kilojoule per kg degree Celsius, pump and turbine efficiency is same as 0 0.8 and the geometric parameters like tau alpha for beam radiation, then collector efficiency factor, then intercept factor, reflectivities all informations are given to us. Let us now solve the problem. Okay, here mass flow rate is given as 180 liter per hour. So, it will be something like 180 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 cubic meter, then it will be multiplied by density and then we will have 3600. Okay. So, if we do this then we can simplify it, you will get something like 0 0.05 kg per second okay. and this is something like pump and turbine both are same okay. and uh, this is the beam radiation I B and uh, overall heat transfer coefficient is given as 6.5. So, this is this is ok and we have omega is given as 13 hours means 
So, this is something like this. So, 1 hour our angle is 15 degree, 15 degree and forenoon is positive, afternoon is negative. So, this 13 hours, 13 hours means it is afternoon and this 1 hour is 15 degree. So, it is minus 15 degree okay. and uh, beta is given as 11.5 degree and phi which is nothing but latitude is given as 26.916 degree and here June n is the 15 June, 15 June if we count it then it will be about 166. Okay. So, by using this we can find out what is declination delta is 23.45 sin of 360 by 365 to 84 plus n. Okay. So, if you substitute the values of n here then we can find out what is delta. So, it is 23.314 degree okay. and we can find out this tilt factor for beam radiation. It is something like cos theta to the cos of theta z and this can be expressed something like sin of delta sin of phi minus beta plus cos of delta then cos of phi minus beta then cos of omega and again we have sin of delta sin of phi plus cos of delta cos of phi and cos of omega right. So, all the values are known to us delta phi beta. Okay. So, if we substitute here then we can find out the values of R b which is found to be 0 0.98992. Okay. Now, also we can find out this flux received by the absorber which is something like I b R b rho tau rho gamma then tau alpha for beam radiation plus I b R b tau alpha for beam radiation then we will have d o for observer w minus outside diameter of glass envelope that is the concentric tubes it is something like absorber and we will have this is a glass cover okay. and this is the outside diameter the outside diameter is d o glass and of course, we will have inside diameter as well. So, this will be something like here. So, this will be d i g. Okay. So, this value once you do the calculation because all the values are known to us now. So, this will give an output of 521.224 watt per meter square. Okay. And also we can calculate the concentration ratio which is represented by C is something like W minus D O glass outside diameter of the glass envelope and then we will have pi D naught absorber is the area of the absorber into L of course, we need to have multiplied by L. So, these values are known like this is 4. So, if we substitute like 4 minus 0 0.1 this will be L anyway L will go pi multiplied by we will have 
0 0.075. So, this will be something like 16.55. Okay? So, once we are done with this, we can calculate what is the collector heat removal factor. This F R, we can calculate. So, it is represented by m dot C p divided by pi T naught absorber multiplied by L, then you will have U L and 1 minus exponential of we will have minus F this efficiency factor multiplied by pi d naught absorber L, then we will have m into C p and U L is the you know, loss coefficient. Okay. So, this is the F r expression, maybe you can write 1. So, let us first find out this term. So, if you substitute like this term is something like 0 0.05 is the mass flow rate, then C p is 4.182 divided by we have 4.713 multiplied by 6.5 just to have done the calculation and this will give a value of something like 6.8256. So, if we substitute there, then we can get a value of F r which is equal to 0 0.8168 considering F this is equal to 0 0.87. Okay? So, once we have this, then what we can calculate is useful heat gain, useful heat gain which is represented by Q u is F r multiplied by pi d naught absorber multiplied by L and this is S minus U L by C, then T F I minus T A. Okay, this is fluid inlet to the ambient. Okay. Then if we substitute these values, F R and other values, then this is found to be 27.35 kilowatt. Okay. And also, if we are really interested about the outlet fluid temperature, that also we can calculate by using the same expression Q u is equal to m C p then delta T. This delta T is nothing but T f o minus T f i. Okay? So, T f i is known to us then from this expression since Q u has already been calculated 27.35 kilowatt then if you do the calculation then this T f o is found to be 390 degree Celsius. Okay. So, this temperature is very very important for us because this temperature is now ready to provide to the Rankine cycle. Right? So, if I draw a T S diagram then it will be more clearer to you. So, this is something like this T S So, here we will have something like this pressure line, then it goes something like this, then it comes here. Okay. And this actual line is represented in dotted line. Okay. We can have this, this may be 1. 2 to this, then we will have 3, 4, 4 this, 5, 6, 6 this, right. Okay. Now, 
this steam which is generated at the exit of the parabolic trough is at a temperature of 390 degrees Celsius, right. So, 390 degrees Celsius, this is very important now. So, to determine Rankine cycle, we need to determine Rankine cycle efficiency, we need to know some of the parameters. So, what are the parameters we need? Let us write down the expression for reheat cycle. So, it is it is something like reheat which is network done by heat supplied. So, this is something like H 3 minus H 4 this, this actual, this is this one, this one plus H 5 minus H 6 this minus H 2 this, this one, this one minus H 1. 2 H 3 minus H 2, this is the heat supplied H 2 this plus you will have H 5, this is also heat supplied minus H 4 this. Okay. That means, we need those enthalpies at say 3, 4 days, 5, 6 days, then at 2 days. Okay. So, all those enthalpies are required. Okay. So, for that we need to do the analysis and take help of steam tables. That means, at 390 degrees Celsius which is nothing but T 3 and P 3 is 60 bar. Okay. So, now let us quickly do the calculation. So, at this condition H 3 from the steam table is found to be 3152.4 kilo joule per kg and S 3 is 6.5043 kilo joule per kg. Okay. And at point 0.4 Point 0.4 entropy is constant here and here. So, S 4 is equal to S 3 which is nothing but 6.5043 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Right? So, this is expanded to 13 bar. Okay? So, P 4 is at 13 bar. Okay. And again from the superheated steam table we have H 4 is something like 2791.55 kilo joule per kc. Okay. So, to find H 4 we need to take help of turbine efficiency it is eta turbine efficiency is something like H 3 minus H 4 this to the H 3 minus H 4. Okay. So, we can find out H 4 this is something like H 3 minus H T eta T and this is actually nothing but high pressure turbine H P multiplied by H 3 minus H 4. So, this is found to be 2863.72 kilo joule per kg. Right? So, again at point 5 we need to find out. Okay. So, at point 5, so here what happens? This is the pressure line and this is at 13 bar. Okay. 
So, this P 5 is at 13 bar and T 5 is 390 because it is said that of the same temperature we have to heat it. So, that means T 5 is also 390, but this pressure line is 13 bar. Okay. So, again we need to use the superheated steam table and from that we can find out what is H 5. So, from steam table H 5 is found to be 3238.2 kilo joule per kg okay. and S 5 can also be taken out at this condition 84 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. And once you know this and since this is a constant uh, entropy process, so entropy at 5 and 6 will be same. So, that is how we can write at point 6 S 6 is equal to S 5 is equal to 7.3084 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. And then this pressure line is at 0.16, right? So now, at, at this condition, what we can write S6F, we can calculate at 0 0.16 bar. So, from the table, we can find out this 772 kilojoule per kg. Kelvin. Okay. Now, again we can find out the values like at gaseous stage S 6 S which is nothing but 7.9846 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and enthalpy also can be extracted from the steam table which is nothing but 2 3 69.1 kilo joule per kg okay. and H 6 F is 231.57 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, once we have this data the next phase we can find out what is the dryness fraction. Dryness fraction which can be calculated something like x is equal to s 5 minus s 6 f divided by s f z and these values are known to us now. So, once we substitute then we can find out the value which is close to 0 0.096. Okay. So, once we know this dryness fraction then we can find out the enthalpy at 6. Okay. So, H 6 will be something like H f plus x into H f z. So, this H f is also known to us and all the values are known. So, now H 6 will be 2377.97 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, H 6 is known right. So, almost we have calculated all the values except H 2 days. So, let us find out the values. So, at point 1 P 1 is equal to P 6 is equal to 0 0.16 bar. Okay. So, from saturated steam table we can find out what is specific volume V 1 is something like 0 0.001015 cubic meter per kg right and H 1 F is something like 231.57 kilo joule per kg right. So, by using these values what we can calculate is the power
pump work pump efficiency. So, once we calculate the pump efficiency from that we can calculate what is H 2 days. Okay. So, this is pressure difference P 2 minus P 1 divided by we have H 2 days minus H 1. So, this pump efficiency is given to us which is equal to 0 0.8 we have pump efficiency 0 0.8 and we know other values as well. So, this is 0 0.001015 and pressure difference we know P 2 minus P 1. So, this difference is also known to us and we have H 2 days minus H 1. So, this is also known to us, this is also known. So, on substitution what we can calculate is H 2 bar which is found to be 239.1622 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, H 2 days is also known to us now. So, can we now calculate the reheat Rankine cycle efficiency which is represented by eta reheat which is represented by q w by q that is network done to the heat supplied is h 3 minus h 4 days plus h 5 minus h 6 days minus h 2 bar minus h 1 to the supplied heat h 3 minus h 2 days plus h 5 minus h 4 days right. So, you once we substitute these values what we have calculated. So, this efficiency is found to be 29.476 percent. Okay. So, this is how we can find out the efficiency of a Rankine cycle where reheating is performed. Okay. So, I hope that you got some of the ideas how to solve this kind of problem because this part is nothing but thermodynamics and other part is the generation of heat from the solar thermal technologies. Okay. So, what I have shown the coupling of this solar thermal and then Rankine cycle. Okay. So, how we can generate the heat and how this heat can be used for generation of steam and use the conventional Rankine cycle for power generation. So, that way we can size the plant. If we know the output or if you know or if you set the output requirement, then we can do the classified analysis and find out how big the solar thermal power plant is required. That means, what could be the size of the plant for achieving the output of x, x may be any kilowatt or megawatt. Fine. So, in summary what we have done in this class we have tried to analyze the thermal solar power plant and the numerical problems which will take you to the design of solar thermal power plant. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you.